What a day for DC fans. We got the first trailer for Shazam, Fury of the Gods. Honestly, I loved the trailer. It was absolutely amazing. The cinematography looked awesome, the visuals look amazing and the BGM was beautiful as well. I think it visually looks lot better than the first movie. The action set pieces look bigger. There are crazy monsters in there. So it overall looks like a bigger movie than the first one. At the same time, it looks really fun and even has a fast and furious family joke. We even got the first official look of the villain, the daughters of Atlas played by Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, and Rachel Zegler. Now, I have seen some fans compare this to the Snyderverse movies and criticize it because it looks way too fun, lighthearted and MCU-like. Well, to those fans, I want to inform that not every DC movie has to be dark and gritty, Shazam is a fun character, and is meant to be funny. Not every dark movie is a good movie, and not every fun light-hearted movie is a bad movie. In this video, I will not be talking and breaking down the entire trailer as such. I will only be talking a specific part of the trailer, and what it means for the larger DCEU going forward which you might have already guessed from the title of this video. With that being said, I want to get into the main subject of this video without any more delay. I want to shift all of your focus on one specific part of the trailer. Yes, I am talking about the opening sequence of the trailer where Shazam talks about the Flash, Batman and Aquaman. We even get to see their footages while he talks about them. Now, the biggest and most interesting thing is that this particular scene of Barry Allen running is clearly from Zack Snyder's Justice League. Some of my viewers have been saying that, hey wait, this is actually not from the Snyder Cut, but it is taken from the Justice League 2017. This is not a big deal. But how can you say that? Any true Zack Snyder fan would know that Justice League 2017 has these red skies all over the place. This is clearly 100% without any doubt taken from Zack Snyder's Justice League. There should be no doubt about it. Now the question is, why did they even put this scene in the trailer? They could have simply avoided it and put any other scene of Barry Allen running and it would have made no difference to the actual trailer. The trailer would still be the same even if they had not added these couple of scenes of Flash running from the Snyder Cut, as well as this iconic shot of Ben Affleck's Batman. Was it a deliberate attempt from Warner Brothers to tell the fans something? Did they just confirm us that the Snyderverse is canon in the most subtle way possible? I am surprised why most of the people are somehow avoiding this huge piece of tease that Warner Brothers Discovery gave us. No one seems to be talking about this. I would say, this is even bigger than a Henry Cavill appearance. If the Snyderverse itself is canon, Henry Cavill's Superman is obviously canon as well. I would rather have Henry Cavill be part of the Snyderverse than have him play another version of Superman in any other timeline. I would rather not have Henry Cavill get the Wonder Woman 1984 kind of treatment. So, I feel this little clip from Zack Snyder's Justice League is actually better than Henry Cavill appearing on stage with a pointless tease. Now this is also very significant, because we also see this shot of Ben Affleck's Batman which is also taken from the Snyder Cut. So, this clarifies that Ben Affleck is still our DCEU Batman at least till the Shazam movie. Everything else are just rumors. So, all of these rumors about Michael Keaton replacing Ben Affleck and all that, they are just rumors and nothing else for the moment. We do not know what is going to happen after the Flash movie. I am not saying that hey, Warner Brothers Discovery showed us some clips from the Snyder Cut, which definitely means that the Snyderverse has been restored. All I am saying is that with that little clip, Warner Brothers might be quietly telling us that hey, just wait. The Snyderverse is still not dead. We do not want you to think that there is no hope of restoration of the Snyderverse. Do not believe in any of the reports and rumors saying that Ben Affleck is going to die off in the Flash movie, and there is a big reboot on the way for the DCEU. In my personal opinion, Keaton would be playing Batman in an entirely different universe that will have nothing to do with the Snyderverse. We can get a Batgirl, Batman Beyond or a Nightwing movie based in that universe. 
He can play an old mentor type Bruce Wayne in that universe who trains some of his other Bat family members like Batman Beyond, Nightwing, and Batgirl. Batfleck on the other hand can keep being our DCEU Batman and give us the much-awaited Batman vs. Deathstroke movie. It would be something like the Venomverse in case of Marvel which is not the MCU but still part of the bigger multiverse. People tend to forget that, the management at Warner Brothers have changed completely in March of this year, when it entered into a merger with Discovery. Now, collectively called Warner Brothers Discovery, is headed by CEO David Zaslav. If reports are to be believed, David is a huge fan of Zack Snyder himself. On 19th of this month we got a digital release of Zack Snyder's Justice League, which is a big deal considering that, this is the first official promotion of the Snyderverse in any form by Warner Brothers themselves. Warner Brothers have never officially promoted Zack Snyder's work to any degree since 2017. So, the digital release of the Snyder Cut could be far more significant than any of us might think. Well, I have some more interesting news to share with you. Yesterday during the DC panel at San Diego Comic Con, Zack Snyder has been announced to be a part of the animated show called The Teen Titans Go. It is also confirmed by Variety that he will be playing himself in the show. Zack is set to appear in the 365th episode of the show. This, my friends, is a huge deal. Zack Snyder being associated again with a Warner Brothers project is big big deal in itself. I am surprised how people are overlooking all these things. The clues are right there in front of our eyes. Now, some of my viewers were really disappointed over the fact that Henry Cavill did not show up at the event is an indication that he is done as Superman. That the Snyderverse is dead and buried. The reason people really thought that Henry Cavill would return at San Diego Comic Con to discuss future Superman plans is because Deadline reported this, Deadline is considered one of the most credible news outlets. If there was no such report from Deadline, I would never have said that Henry Cavill would return at San Diego Comic Con to announce Let's Say Man of Steel 2. An announcement of that caliber would definitely without a shadow of a doubt be reserved for DC fandom, because that is the biggest DC event of the year not Comic Con. Even if there were plans for his return as Superman, or let us say the restoration of the Snyderverse, Warner Brothers Discovery would never reveal them at Comic Con. A big announcement like that, is going to be reserved for DC Fandome. So whatever happened at the DC panel last night, I was actually very happy. I was not expecting them to show us actual footages from Zack Snyder's Justice League. As a Snyderverse fan, I think yesterday was a win for us at Comic Con. Even the Black Adam trailer looked great. I am going to talk about it in my next video. But I would like to say one thing is that the trailer that we saw for Black Adam, looks extremely in the veins of Zack Snyder. The cinematic shots and the color gradings makes me believe that Black Adam would easily fit in the Snyderverse. What is most interesting is that comicbook.com had an interview with Dwayne The Rock Johnson after San Diego Comic Con yesterday. And this is what he had to say when asked about Superman. What does Black Adam think of heroes like Superman and the Justice Leaguers, who I imagine are very famous in this world? And have you have you and Henry talked about what that what that showdown might look like if it ever happened? I will say this. I will I will say that um, I will say that Henry's a buddy, and he is a phenomenal Superman. He is a phenomenal Superman, and Henry Cavill is the Superman of our generation. With respect to the other Supermans in the in the past, and every time I see him, we have some tequila. I always say, "That's Superman," and these guys will attest to that. So, um, I, my longtime business partner, Danny Garcia, who you know, uh, who's uh, you know his sister. Um, she has been a passionate advocate for Henry Cavill and his career uh, for a very, very long time. So there, the reason why I say all that is because there's a, you got a lot of people who advocate uh, on Henry's behalf and root for him to win. And I do root for him to win. And at the end of the day, he is a phenomenal Superman. Well, if you noticed, he took a long pause before answering the question. It was as if he was very careful on choosing what he intended to say. I could tell from his face 
that he is definitely hiding something. And the most interesting part is that, the interviewer did not even mention Henry Cavill. He just asked about the prospect of a Black Adam vs Superman in the movie. And The Rock immediately referred to Henry Cavill. He always referred to Henry Cavill's Superman with an, is, not, was. I do not know about you, but I can definitely smell something interesting that The Rock is cooking. And it would be absolutely crazy if we see Henry Cavill wearing his black suit from Zack Snyder's Justice League appear in the movie. The Black Adam trailer which dropped a month ago featured a number of goons driving technologically advanced flying scooters, which fans have speculated could be the first look at the film's version of Intergang. Now, if you do not know, Intergang first debuted in Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen edition 133. It is basically a gang formed by a criminal named Bruno Mannheim. Intergang was quickly outfitted with weaponry from the New Gods, as Darkseid hoped to use them as soldiers in his fight to find the anti-life equation. So, as you see, Black Adam already has a Darkseid connection, and it could be connected to the Snyderverse, if that is what Warner Brothers Discovery wants to do. So, then, I will leave it here for you to decide. What do you think of this whole thing? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.